Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Survival Games mini-series. In this episode, we're going to redo or fix the spawn system, because there are a few issues with it. For example, if I had players 1, 2, and 3 in an arena, and then player 2 decided to leave before the game started, and then someone else joined, player 2's spot would not be filled and it would remain empty. Also, if I had uh, players 1, 2, 3, and 4 and then the fourth player decided to leave, and then another player decided to join, it would put them in the wrong spawn, and they would have two people in the same spawn. And that would obviously not be good. So we're going to go ahead and redo it. We're going to do it by using a wrapper class, which contains the spawn location, um, the player in the location, which will be important a little bit later, and then also a boolean as to whether or not it is filled. Now, you could... Um, Use you could um, instead of an array list, you could use a hash map of player and location, or location and player, and then the boolean could just be whether the player is in there or not. Uh, but then it, it gets kind of messy, and it's a little bit strange to do it like that. So uh, this is just how we're going to go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and write a spawn class, and this is going to contain a private location, location, and a private player, player. Then we're going to have um, spawn is going to be instantiated with a location and not a player because by default it's just going to be empty. Uh, but then we can add the player. So we can say public location get location return location public player get player which will return player public player set player which takes in a player and sets the player so this is like when the player joins we would call the set player method that should be a void not a player and then a public boolean has player which is just going to return player is not equal to null so if it's not equal to null then it does have a player and I think that that's all we're really going to need. So again, you could use a hash map of location and player or player and location, but I prefer to just use an array list of spawn because it's a little bit easier to read with, like, you can easily tell, you know, with the get location, um, get player, set player, has player, all those methods. It just makes it easier to see than using a hash map and, you know, worrying about that. So we're going to change this from an array list of location to an array list of spawn. And now we obviously need to change it there. And then right here when we go to add it, um, we want to wrap this in a new spawn. So it's going to make a new spawn, and then that's the location it's going to give. And we don't instantiate the player to begin. So now right here, this is where we're going to go ahead and find the first open spawn. So we're going to find, we're going to go through all of the spawns, starting with the first one. And as soon as we find an open one, we're going to stick the player in there. So we're going to say for spawn spawn in spawns, um, if spawn, if not spawn dot has player, so if it is empty, if it's an empty spawn, uh, then we want to say spawn dot set player p, and then uh, p dot teleport spawn dot get location. So we teleport them to the spawn and we set the player in the spawn so that we know that that's the player. So that is all great and that will work as far as filling in the gaps but now we need to make sure that when the player leaves we set that to be null for two reasons. The first is so that um, Bloodbath or you know the survival games plugin so that it knows that the um, spawn is empty, but also because of the garbage collection. We don't want to leave a reference to the player open, we want to remove that. So over in remove player, uh, we're going to go ahead and say, right where we do players.remove p, we're going to say um, we need to do another loop. So for spawn spawn in spawns, if spawn.getplayer, well first of all, if spawn.has player, because if they don't, 
uh, then we don't want to deal with a null player. Uh, spawn dot get player, or sorry, if spawn dot has player, and spawn dot get player dot equals p spawn dot set player to be null. So we want to remove the player from that spawn. And that should work fine there. Uh, and then also over in the start method, we want to go ahead and say for spawn spawn in spawns spawn dot set player null. So right there in the start method, um, right when the game starts, we want to set uh, we want to remove all the players from the spawns because at this point we no longer care. Um, which spawn the player had because this is after the game begins and that doesn't matter. So we want to remove all of those references. But before the game starts, if they decide to leave for any reason, if they leave with the command or by leaving the game, we want to make sure that we remove them uh, from there. All right, uh, last thing right here is when we add the spawn, we need to just wrap this in the spawn class just like that. So we add a new spawn for the location, which is the parameter and yeah I think that that should just about do it uh, so in this episode we fixed the spawn system so now it works a little bit better we wrote a spawn uh, class that represents a spawn contains the location and the player and then we integrated it into the arena class so now if a player leaves and then another player joins their spot will be filled by another player and there certainly will never be an instance of two players overlapping in a spawn so that's all for this video as always subscribe if you want to see more comment with what you want to learn if you like this video click the like button and i'll see you guys soon with some more uh, survival games and coding bye for now